is the product of eight negative numbers and seven positive numbers, positive or negative, okay? Positive. All right, so, so when you say eight negative numbers, eight neg numbers, seven positive numbers, this doesn't matter, just like life. When, when someone gives us positive comments, it has no effect on us. We don't remember, we remember the negative comments, unfortunately. The eight um, negative numbers are gonna be positive. If you don't believe me, just try eight negative ones. Okay, you, just, you can just choose anything. And then, you know, obviously seven, Seven positive ones, is, you're still good, just going to get positive one. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many positive numbers you have, it's all about the negative numbers. If there's an even amount of negative numbers, then it's going to be positive. If it's an odd amount, it's going to go change it back to negative. Okay, you guys good with that one? Mm -hmm. All right, if you don't know, guess. Don't get me started on people who don't guess on things or you put you you know how I feel about IDK don't ever say IDK on a test I will I will yeah I I might yeah I will definitely think less of you I'm sorry but yeah and that's okay because that's a reminder to you that you you DK right you don't know you don't, um, you don't all right, define parallelogram, okay? Who's got a definition of parallelogram? I remember from two straight lines. Two by sides. What? Two straight lines by each other. Okay, is that a parallelogram? No, because it has to be. Oh, wait, no, two sets of straight lines. Two sets of straight lines? There's two sets of straight lines. Two parallel Yeah. Is it a quadrilateral with two parallel sides? Two pairs of parallel sides. So if you just say two parallel sides, you just defined what? What did you define? You defined a trapezoid. Or yeah, you just say quadrilateral. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with two parallel sides. That's it. We just draw you a pretty picture. Or one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram is a quad with two pairs of parallel sides. You see the difference? Okay, you can't say four parallel sides because they're not parallel to each other. But you say two pairs of parallel sides or two sets of parallel sides. Okay, do you see why that's wrong? I thought I said pairs. I think you said sides. I was like, I got two sides. Yeah. But I have that. Well, pairs of parallel sides. Pairs of parallel sides. It gets a little lost. Yeah. A little mushy. Okay, how would you define, how would you define a rectangle? Ew. Ew. What's a rectangle? Is it a quadrilateral with all equal angles? You could say that, yeah. And what would you say? Is it a quadrilateral with four right angles? Yeah, and, and since they're, they're equal, and they're, since there's only four, you, it has to be. Mr. Flat, Mr. Flat, you're, she, she has, she gets a free problem, so. No, 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 you said it. Oh, no, but, no, you, because you were like, she, she goes, did, did he say rectangle? And I was like, hold on. So I read the thing, and then it says equal angle with triangle. Angular triangle. Who said where? What? On the answer number two. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not asking about B. I'm just asking about rectangle. Um, but let's go to B. 
because I did, you know, we, I talked about trapezoids too. So I'm just trying to think of all the possible things they might ask you. Okay, and a lot of people, like you guys said, an equilateral triangle on the, the last test was all equal angles or something, or vice versa. So, yeah, you're right. They do have equal measures of angles, but the equilateral literally means equal size, right? Or the same length side. So don't say all the sides are the same, even though you're right, but that's not how you define it, okay? That's not how you define it. So, um, equal angular triangle is triangle with all angles the same measure. So you can't say equal, why not? Because that's for numbers. Yeah, only numbers can be equal. So that's more of a, we're really picky with that in geometry, but in algebra, if you say a triangle with all equal angles, I'll give it to you, but I'll throw up in my mouth just a little bit, okay? Can you throw up on command and spit that? No. Can you get pizza on command? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, go ahead and get a pizza. It's not a ninja turtle. <laughs> it's not a ninja turtle. Weren't you going to buy us pizza this fall? What? I just remember you saying that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, you did. You did say that. A month ago, even, you said on this class. On Don't you put words in mouth. On the October 26th, Number three. we will get pizza. Yeah, right. Maybe that was you're, a, you're a liar. Number, number three, which ones are like terms? Now, it doesn't matter what order the letters are in, but remember, the, they have to have the same variables with the same exponents. Now, luckily, there's no exponents. So which ones have the same variables in it? This is a tough one for you dyslexic people. That's me too. Sierra, what do you got? A, C, and E. So A, C, B is A. A, C, Z, and B, C, A. That's just A, C, B in a different order. And then B, Z, A, nope. And that doesn't even, it's not even like terms of B. And C, A, B. So those are all A, B, C's in just different order. So A, C, and E are like terms. That's all you have to write, okay? If you forget one, I'll still give you half credit because you got like A and C right or A and E right. But make sure you look at all of them thoroughly. There's not gonna be two sets of like terms. There's only gonna be one set of like terms and you have to give me all the letters. Can you guys handle that? All right, number four. All right, now you don't have to use unit multipliers. I'm not gonna force you if it's confuses you, but I do want you to gar start getting used to unit multipliers. So I'm going to give you extra credit. I'm going to give you a point, which helps, you know, keep getting these little points. We'll get there. To convert 62 square centimeters to inches, 62 centimeters squared. The first step on converting or using unit multipliers is to write the first measurement as a fraction. If it's not a fraction already, put it over one. All right, now we're going from here to here, right? Square feet. So we have to cross this bridge first. This crosses the bridge from metric to US customary. So what are the unit multipliers? What are the choices we use, uh, that we have to choose from? How many what are in what? 2.54 what and what? Okay, and remember, we, we want to cross cancel the centimeters, so we need that on the bottom in one inch. Okay, it's not one centimeter over 2.54 inches, right? There's 2.54 centimeters in one inch. Okay, but see how this is only going to cross cancel one of those, right? Centimeter, centimeters. We need two of them, so we're just going to do the same unit multiplier. So when you convert, area you basically do everything twice everything twice don't square the 62 am i doing it wrong uh no i think you just missed four. Oh, i missed four yeah let's go to, well, we'll do five first then sorry about that square centimeters oh we're already there 
first centimeter is square inches. That's all we have to do. So now it's 62 inches, inches, all over 2.54 squared. And actually your answer key, will just leave it like that. Now that doesn't really feel good to me. I'm like, I would want to multiply it out, but you can leave it like that if you want to. Okay, let's go back to four. Now this is two unit multipliers, even though you only went from one town to the next, right? But it's two unit multipliers because we're converting an area. So when we convert in volume, guess what? You're going to do everything three times instead of two times. So this is two unit multipliers because you're going to two different towns. First, you have to go from inches to feet, and then you have to go from feet to miles. So 20 inches over one goes first, right? Now we're going, we got to go to inches to feet. Don't skip. Unless you know right away how many inches are in a mile, you don't have to do that. Inches and feet. How do you get from inches to feet? It's either 12 inches over one foot or one foot over 12 inches. Which one is it going to be? Yeah, why? Because it just is, not because you have to get rid of the inches. Yep. Bury the past. This is where you're traveling from. You're trying to get the feet. Okay, so, and then what? And then we're, now we're in feet town. How do you get from feet to miles? Well, feet's got to go on the bottom. Miles has got to go on top. How many feet are in a mile? 52. All right, if you don't know that, please leave our state. No offense, but you don't, you don't deserve to live here if you don't know how many feet are in a mile. But you guys all know that. 5280? All right. 5280, that's where the mile high city. 20. Okay, so the feet's cancel. You're just left with 20 times 1 times 1 times mile over 12 times 5280. You can just leave it like that. Boom. Okay, how's that feel? Good, good. We didn't really do math, and that's okay. Because let math do the math. You just worry about your Instagram. I don't know what you guys worry about. What do you guys worry about? Life. Life? The ocean. Money. The ocean. <laughs> it's going to eat me. <laughs> I worry about it. The mountains. <laughs> okay. Number six. Okay, they give you the circumference and they want you to find the diameter. How many diameters are in the circumference? Um, pi. pi. Right? Yeah. So if your circumference is 8 pi, then what's your diameter? <laughs> what? Uh, I think it would just be 8. eight. Yeah. Right? So this is 8 pi. This is pi times diameter. You're solving for diameter. Um, guess what? You can just do that. Diameter equals 8. Or remember to get a circumference, you just tag on a pi. You multiply by pi. So to go backwards, you divide by pi. So if it's 8 pi and you divide by pi, then you just cancel out the pi. All right? Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Piece of pie. Because there's like, to say something's easy is like it's a piece of cake, or you say it's as easy as pie. Have you ever heard that? Oh, that's what that one is. So, but then uh, Uncle Kevin used to always say like, piece of pie. Like, he was like that's a piece of pie. When he was like younger and funny. Or easy as cake, or piece of pie. Yes, piece of pie. Get it? Addy, because it's like switching two different sayings. It's clever. It's like St. Pepper's. Classic yeah. Uncle Kevin. Okay. No, number seven. No, number seven. The length of the base of a scalene triangle is 22 meters. The height is 14. I don't care that it's a scalene triangle, right? So all I need to know is how to find the area of a triangle. One half base times height, right? What? Okay. 
Okay. What's the base? 22. What's the height? 14. Boom. So just multiply straight across. What's one half of 22? You guys know the shortcut for multiplying by 11? Do, do, add. So take the 14. Watch this. You're going to love this, Ava. So you take it, you spread it apart, and then the number in the middle is those two added together. 154. And tell all your friends this weekend. And you're like, guys, guys. <laughs> okay, what's my unit? Meters. So square meters. Boom. Okay, does negative 5 or 5 satisfy the equation? Negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. Does this offend you because it's so easy? Is it negative 5 or is it 5? What's 5 plus 5? Not 0. Negative 5 plus 5, it works. Okay, or you could solve that equation by getting rid of that 5. How do you get rid of 5? Minus 5. You subtract it from both sides. 0 minus 5 is negative 5, and you're left with x equals negative 5. Boom. All right, am I going too fast? All right, this is, this is the squishy part. This is the squishy part. Number 9, we're just going to squish it all together. You don't have to do this second step, but I want you to... Do it if you need to. Minus 5C minus DF. My short-term memory isn't as good. So I, I do this a lot because I can only do one thing at a time. All right, so distribute. We're going to distribute this. Do you remember doing this on Tuesday? Do the little rainbows? Should we do the little rainbows? Who likes rainbows? <laughs> See, no doubt. Okay, so we're just gonna squish it all together. You can just, you can literally, literally squish it. So do this, negative three X four D minus negative three X five C minus negative three X three F. Okay, see what I did? I just squished it all together, but now I can take this term and I can multiply all this, whatever I can. What's three times four? Oh. So negative 12 and then X times D. Since it doesn't matter what order, let's put in alphabetic order because it will sleep better at night. And what's minus negative? Plus. Yeah, plus positive. So this is plus. And then you can multiply the three and the five together, right? 15, and then the X and the C, let's make it CX so we can sleep better. Chicken scratch this crap. Three, what's three times three? Nine. So that's nine FX and you're done. Is that doable? Now, most of you will not do this second step, that's fine because you can do that in your head, negative 12 dx, negative times negative, so positive 15 cx, positive nine fx, okay? Can you guys handle that? Is that doable? Yeah. So the five c, that's supposed to be a five e. Is it? Yeah. I couldn't read that. Luckily, Still in alphabetical order. Yeah. That would have been disastrous. No, I was looking at this and I was like, there's no way I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been your way. All right, number 10. Simplify by adding like terms. Okay, and this is, this is nice. The next test will get a little trickier. The next test will be you have to like clean up each term first, alphabetize it and all that. You can alphabetize this if you want to, or you can just recognize, just like we did in number two, 
to figure out which ones were like terms, you have to identify the like terms first. So I'm going to copy down the problem. Negative 7x squared yz plus 3x squared yz. That sounds familiar. Minus x squared yz. That looks familiar. Minus 4y. What a loser. Doesn't belong. Why don't you go home? Nobody wants you. Sorry, that was that's not very kind. Okay, now I'm just gonna double check because my dyslexic mind doesn't like these problems. If I see an x squared y z and an xy squared z, those look the same to my dyslexic dyslexic mind. Okay, but these are both the x has a two, the x has a two, the y has nothing, and the z have nothing, and all three of those. So all three of these are like terms. So I'm gonna add them together, combine them together. What happens when you send these guys to the battlefield? Negative seven fights with positive three and negative one. Negative four. Yeah, because this, you got, you got your negatives are going to team up on that positive three, and you have negative eight x squared y z is against three, and it's not four. Did you say four? I'm just and trying it's to see. It's not even negative. negative. Or what? Oops. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for keeping me on my toes. So negative five x squared y z plus that loser negative four y. Okay, you can only segregate in math. Okay, you can only be racist in math. Let's go. Number eleven. Whoa, look at how cute. They're trying to confuse us. I laugh in the face of this problem. If I can copy it down right. <laughs> right, right. That's an N, that's not an M. M to the second a squared, n to the fourth. Why do they put m's and n's in the same problem? That messes with my head, my eyes. It's new math. It's new math. Okay, so how many total a's are being multiplied? Four? Yeah, a, 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 a. Okay, so a to the fourth. Now let's do the n's next, because it's alphabetical order. M, M. Mm, so m to the fourth. Well, that's nice. Is it all going to end up like that? No. If it, okay, and if it, if you need to add that, you know, whatever. N and n n n n n n n to the eighth. I remember those fours and eight. I think I remember them because it might be like that on the test. But you didn't hear that from me. Shh. Number twelve. That's it, okay? And it's nice when it's all in one thing. When, when we start getting into uh, rational expressions, when you have stuff on the bottom, then you have to clean that up as well, but that's great. Okay, number 12. What does this mean? Say it out loud. Say this in English. Read this problem. Ilya? Is it x divided by one x fourth? x divided by 1 so how do you get rid of the 1 fourth? That guard? One fourth. That's not how I would guard x, I guess. Like here, <laughs> stand on top of my face. No, that's not a good way to guard a prisoner. But we can get rid of him pretty easily by just multiplying by 1 fourth. Okay, that's weird, but I'll just get rid of you. <laughs> All right, so x equals, okay, multiply that. 3 fourths, you're done. Forget about it. That's not bad, right? You could check it if you wanted to. 3 fourths divided by 1 fourth. Copy dot flop. 3 fourths times 4 over 1. Did you not have lunch, Ava? Did you not have lunch? What were you doing at lunch? You're just like spreading it out? Like, because I, I don't mind. I don't mind.
crunch it. It's the crunching that got me. Maybe she focuses on she eats. Yeah. Are you? A, are you? Do you do better math when you eat crunchy loud chips? Okay. I thought so. That's what I assumed. But I, you know, I do everything bigger than I eat. That's why you should drink pizza and extra fries. I agree, but that's expensive. Do you get Costco size? Yeah, it's like, oh, so they're free? Just get us a frozen pizza. We'll eat that. Oh, so they're free? We'll have to heat it up. (laughs) Have you ever had a frozen pizza? I'm excited to. (laughs) I'm willing to try. I mean, they have a microwave downstairs. We can bring it up. Yeah, we've also got a microwave. Microwave. Mr. Flack, don't you have, like, a teacher, like, spending? Budget? Yeah. I think that's for school work. I don't think they give that. No, too much paperwork. It's school paper work. Work. It's all because yeah. it's yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it's going to make us successful in the future. Okay. <laughs> How do you get rid of that guard? <laughs> At least this guard is like standing next to the prisoner. How do you get rid of that dude? Chiabra? Okay. Chair? Um, <laughs> Can I just call you chair? Yeah. <laughs> you do the opposite operation. So like yeah. the five is getting multiplied by the six, so you divide both sides oh, by five. Look at that. So you should yeah. get x equals four. Good. Any questions there? Or just think about it long enough and you'll figure it out. Five times what is 20? Oh, four. But you don't have to do think. You can use algebra. x minus five equals eight. How do you get rid of minus five? Which is what? A loss addition. X equals 13. Just verify that, check it, make sure it's good. All right. Math is a cult. cult. Mm -hmm. There are like ritualistic things that you do in math. Really? Religiously. Yeah. Like, well. (laughs) <laughs> well, no, like following step-by-step procedures. No, they only murder people. Yeah. Yeah. They only murder people. Okay, so same rules apply. That weird-looking guard is guarding X. What's And how do you get rid of that weird-looking guard? Subtract it. Okay. I'm not afraid. I'll do that. Minus two and two thirds. Minus two and four six. Same thing, right? This still fit, makes my shoulder feel okay because two thirds is the same thing as four six. Everybody okay with that? That I did that little shortcut? So x equals five six minus four six is one six. Eight minus two is six. Forget about it. You're done. Okay, this is going pretty well. You guys, are you guys having a good time? <laughs> it would be better if we had if we had pizza. pizza. <laughs> Such a glutton. <laughs> Mr. Black, you could wow. make us a deal that if everybody has an A by the end of the year, that's what you do for the But then we only have like pizza at the end of the year. But then everybody hates it. Too. That's a deal. <laughs> Hey, that's okay. They'll do better next year because everyone hated them. I'll make you that deal, but somebody keeps turning in his assignments two weeks late. So I don't think an A is in this person's future. Between an A and a C. (laughs) (laughs) If you pass. C's get degrees. All right, number 16. Evaluate negative A, whatever A is, squared, plus whatever C is times parenthesis, whatever A is minus whatever C is. I'm not going to say that. Minus N squared. Hey, A equals negative 3. C equals negative 2. And N equals 3. So why don't we substitute all that in for over here? So everything else I'm going to leave the same. So it's kind of like we just stripped the problem of all the variables. And now we're going to replace them. Okay, so A is negative 3, so Mr. Flack said put negative numbers in parentheses. C is parentheses negative 2. N is 
Where'd the A come? Oh, that's A. <laughs> negative 3 minus C, and then negative 2. N is just 3. I don't need a parenthesis there because Mr. Flax said I don't. Okay. All right. Now let's do parentheses first. Mr. Flax said <laughs> P first. Okay. So now we've got, let's, uh, let's figure out, let's, let's simplify what's in parentheses there. So this is negative don't chicken scratch. That's a classic mistake. Why would chicken scratch in here be bad? Why? Because when you see the negative parenthesis negative three, you're gonna assume it's, there's only two negatives. Yeah. But you have to count the exponents plus what's right. outside of it. So you do exponents first. So this is actually negative. Negative three times another negative three. But don't think about it like this. Just do order of operations. Remember, negatives come after powers. But what comes before powers? Parentheses. So this negative is now negative. Th this three is now negative. So when you square negative three, you get positive nine. So the only thing I'm going to do next in my order of operations are these exponents. So negative nine plus... Negative 2 times negative 1 minus 9. Okay? So far, so good? All right. I think your mistake, if you're going to make a mistake, is one of these 9s is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative and you're going to cancel it to 0, which is not right. I'm sorry. So let's do this one next. What's negative 2 times negative 1? Positive 2. So now I've got negative 9 plus 2 minus 9. So that's negative 16. Right? If you, if you get confused, you can chicken scratch here. Okay, two negatives. Negative 9, negative 9 form a negative 18 army. And then a positive 2 would get you down to negative 16. All right? Lots of math in this one. Yeah? It's, I'm confused because it says negative a squared plus c parenthesis a minus c minus m squared. So if the c and the a are multiplied, that would be negative 9 plus 6. If you distribute it instead? Yeah. Or what? So that would be positive 6. Um, positive 6 times, or plus negative four, uh, right? So it should also give you positive two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You can distribute it if you want, but it's, I mean, if they're numbers, just do it inside parentheses first. Number 17, find the perimeter, okay? So you can do the vertical and horizontal line instead of doing all this stuff. Okay, so you could add up all around, but what's the problem here? you have no idea what the length of these line segments are. They look like it could be one, one, and one, right? But you don't know. But who cares? Because <laughs> either way, you're gonna add it up to three. Even if you guess, let's say this is two, this is one, and this is zero. <laughs> it's still gonna be right, okay? You just like, okay, I just have to make sure these add up to three, so maybe let's try one. But it doesn't matter. Maybe this is 1.25 and this is 0.75. But what are you doing in your head? You're making sure that that adds up to 3. And then you realize, why am I wasting my life? Because this is just 3 over here total, 3 over here, 6 over here, and 6 over here. So perimeter is just two threes and two sixes. That's it. So what is that? Uh, uh, 18 meters okay but if you want to add in and try to estimate what those length side lengths are you can 
because you're still going to get it right even though you might not estimate these correctly it doesn't matter because what you're doing in your head is you're trying to make sure it adds up to three okay so 17 is like the first question where if you had to be that person to uh, figure out what each side length was first before you did the problem then you'd be in trouble but you don't have to know each side you just need to know what the sides add up to that's what perimeter is perimeter is not after knowing the length of every single side, add them up to find the perimeter. No, perimeter just says the sum of the, all the lengths of the sides. That's it. You don't have to know the sides. You just need to know the sum of the sides. Okay? All right, 18. Find the area. Okay. So I'm going to go the area of the rectangle first plus the roof of the rectangle. Okay, so this is, what is that? A six height and a 17 base. This is a 17 by 12. Okay, let's do this. Let's distribute this. Can you guys do that in your head? What's 10 times 17? 170. 170, and then what's two more 17s? 34. 34, so what's one, 170 plus 34? 204. And let's go one half base times height, or guess what? Since it's commuted, one half height times base. So, because I don't like taking half of 17, but I can take half of six. So, what's three times 17? 51. Okay, because this is one half base times height, remember? And this is just base times height. Add them together. You get your final area, 255 square miles. Wow, that is a really big house. 17 mile long house. Maybe it's not. Waterproof. Not my house. That has got to be like one of those bunker houses. Okay, find the surface area of the right circular. So, so this is, remember, surface area is area of the top plus the area of the bottom plus your lateral surface area, which your LA, which when we did this with a, a prism, it was just perimeter times height. This is just circumference times height, okay? Because when you unwrap that cylinder, I don't have paper towels here, but if you unwrap this, it's just a rectangle. And the length of that rectangle is the circumference because that's the distance around the whole thing. Okay, but now I'm looking at it like this. So see how we tipped over the can of soup. Correct. So now it looks like... And if you guys don't be jealous when you watch me draw things because... <laughs> I mean, I was almost jealous of myself. Like, why can't I draw that like that well? And then I realized, <laughs> I do that. And so I'm good at this. I've been doing this for a long time. Ian, stop crying. Yet one day, if you practice, you can draw that well that fast. I mean, it's not perfect, but hey, it's good, okay? So you got your top. How do you find the area of that top? What shape is that top? It's a skirkle. Pi r squared, and the base is going to be the same shape. Another pi r squared. And circumference, how do you find the circumference of a circle? It's 2 times pi times r. Yeah, 2 pi r or pi times diameter. So, And then times height because it's circumference times height, so pi dh. All right, so this is 9 pi, right, because the radius is 3, plus another 9 pi, plus... Pi D, so 6 pi times 6, so 36 pi. Do you see how I got 36 pi? Mm -hmm. Pi times D, which is 6, times H, which is another 6. Pi times 6 times 6 is 36 pi. So what is that? 54 pi, and you can multiply by 3.14 if you want to, or you can give me an exact answer. 
and not an estimated answer and say 54 pi square meters. It's not cubic, even though we're dealing with a three-dimensional object, we're just dealing with the surface area. So if I unwrapped all this and laid it out on the flat surface, that would still be area. How many squares can I fit in all that? All right. How do we do number 20? You can do it the hard way. Or you could do it the easy way. So there's the, uh, it's a prism. And we're asked to find the volume. I thought I was asking for the uh, surface area. Okay. Again, don't don't be jealous. I mean, that's not even great, but it's still good. Okay, so the height of the prism itself is eight centimeters. This goes up eight centimeters, but see how this is not this height. This is this is where this fourteen centimeters is right here. That's the height of just that two-dimensional triangle. Well, to find the volume, how do you find the volume of any prism? Any prism, not this one. How do you find the volume of any prism? What's the definition of a prism? Did we talk about that? Three-dimensional, but specifically, it's the same shape all the way up, right? So every floor is the same area, okay? So how do you find the volume of any prism? You can tell it to me in six words. What? I don't know what you were doing, but it's specifically in like a rectangular prism. But a prism doesn't have to be rectangular. It could be any shape that is repeated the, the height. Yeah. Based on, what do you mean base times height? Yeah, but if we're finding the volume, it's how many cubes can we fit in there? What? No, I was just saying, like, measurement from side to side. No. Well, I'm glad I asked this. I never usually ask this. Because this is just a... You know, how do you find the volume of this room? Like, how many boxes can you fit in this room? How would you calculate that? Base times width times height. Okay, in this room, yes. But what were you going to say, Mercy? Okay, yeah. So you would, what are you doing when you find how, how many boxes you can just put on the ground? Let's see, figure out how many boxes you can put on the ground. How would you determine that without actually bringing in boxes? Length. Length times width. What did you just find? Area of the base. Okay, and then the height is how many levels of those same boxes. So volume is area of base. It doesn't matter what the base is. If you can find the area of the base and multiply it by the height, because that's how many levels of boxes there are, then you're done. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. This is a blown up version of the base. So that's one half BH times another H, which is kind of weird, right? Because this is a different kind of H. This is the height the of the prism. This is the height of the triangle, okay? We could do a capital H, but usually capital H, capital letters like the area. And what, what uh, Saxon does is a capital B times H which is area of base times height. Well, let's just get numbers in there so we can just ignore that because that's making you uncomfortable. 
1 half 7 14 times height of the prism, which is 8. So look, 1 half times 14 is 7, times 7 is 49, times 8. What's 50 times 8? 400 minus an 8? 392. All right. 392. Uh, what's my label? Cubic centimeters. That's right. So all you have to remember to find the volume of any three-dimensional prism, area of base times height. Can you remember that? Okay. Good job. Black math, give me some math and